Well, welcome. We've taken a lot of pride as we've learned about the incredible services and the quality of not only the people, but of the technology we brought in and of the services we offer. I just learned something, and we've invited some people on the show to talk to us because the hospital, the medical center, doesn't just sit on its laurels. There's a whole new program that says no matter, you know, we got an A, well, there's always the A+. Plus. So we're going to talk to some people who are the ones who are never satisfied with the A. <laughs> they want to learn about our experiences. They want to learn about how we're treated and always make it a little better. I think that's a safe way to start. Absolutely. Why don't we start with an introduction? Hi, my name's Anne, and uh, I work in the ER. I do medication reconciliation uh, for the hospital, for patients that are being admitted into the hospital from the ER. Um, we are staffed from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day. It's one person, um, but there's someone there every day. And what we do is we go and we take a peek and talk to the patient or their representative about their medications, and we try to compile the most accurate list possible um, so we get a good idea of what's running through the system at the time that they're with us so we can address any issues um, that may be playing a role in why they're in the ER. I'll come back and ask how life in the Taj Mahopkins is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Kathy O'Connell. I'm the Director of Risk at the hospital and I also facilitate mm -hmm. uh, the PFAC committee. PFAC is um, Patient and Family Advisory Council. Um, a few years ago, Massachusetts enacted a law that required all hospitals in Massachusetts to have this committee, mm -hmm. um, and it's working very well. It's comprised of 50% hospital members and 50% community members, and we work together on various initiatives to, um, to improve the patient experience. Mm -hmm. um, and this, uh, this group, uh, we, we work together from September until June. Uh, last mm -hmm. September when we got together we, um, we decided uh, that we would work on a couple of different initiatives and one mm -hmm. of them was medication safety. Uh, with the goal of trying to get the importance of patients having accurate medication lists mm -hmm. into the community. Um, very often I'm sure um, Ann could tell you that people, patients come into the mm -hmm. hospital and they don't know what medications they're on. Um, they don't have an accurate list. Um, it requires, it, that poses a little bit of a challenge um, for us. Uh, so we wanted to get the information out into the community of how important that is. My name is Andra Stone. I'm president of the auxiliary, but I'm also on the PFAC and on this committee for medication reconciliation and how they could, where I was able to tie them in together. Mm -hmm. You get your hands in everything, from giving my mother a warm blanket. <laughs> oh. It's funny, because when the auxiliary first came, and they talked about some of the programs, mm -hmm. and you know, one that was the warm blanket, and we right. were like, oh. okay, uh, a warm blanket, that's a concern, till mom goes into the emergency room, mm -hmm. and she's cold. Mm -hmm. And that warm blanket meant so much to her. Absolutely. Yeah, she loved it. It makes yeah. a big yeah. difference. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you start looking at what you do to improve the patient experience. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be that we want a linear accelerator or a new Da Vinci robot. Right. Something as mm -hmm. silly as, you know, a 90 year old lady getting a warm blanket to make her feel better made all the difference in the world. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So now, when Jeff Hopkins came on, he talked about how important it was yes. to know the medication you're on. Mm -hmm. Because when I asked him, I said, what could I do, you know, Joe Q Public, mm -hmm. that would best help you keep me alive? And the first thing he said is, well, do you have a medication card in your wallet? And I was like, no, just ask me. He goes, really? You knocked out in a car accident how responsive are you going to be? Mm -hmm. Of course, that night you go home and you take a business card and, <laughs> and start writing it all down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that the kind mm -hmm. of thing that I'm supposed to do? It's very helpful when you have a list with you. It's a starting point for us. Um, what we do is we interview the patient and hopefully they're able to speak with us or a representative. And if they're not, we have to go by a list. And with that starting point list, we ask also for their pharmacy. Where do they fill their medication, whether it be mail order or retail 
or the VA or anywhere up in Canada, and we try to call those locations to get an accurate list of what the medication name is, what the dosage is, what the directions are, how the doctor wrote the medication, and then we come back. Canada? We, we mm -hmm. have, yeah. yes, some folks I do. thought the FDA frowned on people yes. importing drugs. They do, but you know, this is real life, so this is what we do. We talk to patients and we find out where they get their medications. It could be, you know, someone else's medication sometime too. But we really try to get an accurate list so we know what exactly is streaming through the patient at the time. Well, that would make sense. Yeah. I mean, do a lot of people just say I have no idea? I mean, MMRX or, you know, these companies. Yeah. Was it Optima or what? Mm -hmm. Optum. I have mm -hmm. Optum. Optum, yeah. Express Scripts. Express Scripts Caremark. was enough. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. I Humana. have Optum. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It used mm -hmm. to be you went down to Bob Nargi at Davrin's, right. mm -hmm. and he took care of you. <laughs> yeah. Right. We've grown a little bit since yes, then. Yes, right. we have. Thank yeah, you. the other issue is, um, I think, keeping them up to date. Often right. you, will, you will have a list and you'll say, so you're taking uh, you know, a particular medication. They, oh, no, I stopped that a couple of weeks ago. Right. Oh, are you taking something else? Um, I'm not sure. So um, keeping an accurate list, it's, it's hard. It's, you have to sort of remember it. Every single doctor visit, um, every mm -hmm. encounter that you have with, um, with medical field uh, mm -hmm. to well, make sure that you're give me, and now my mother's 93, so she's passed this, but uh, years ago, it would give me a retro nag. So instead of my parents telling me all the things I wasn't doing right, I would think, you want to help your mom and dad yes. out? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. then you make sure that in dad's wallet or mom's wallet mm -hmm. or a purse or somewhere yeah, that there's nice. an up-to-date. I mean, how yeah. long, if you check it every few months? Mm -hmm. right. It changes often depending on even if you see um, a specialist and they change the medications for the patient, whether it be your mother or yourself. It's important to update that too. Or sometimes you pick up a prescription from the pharmacy and then you start taking it and it, you may not feel good and you contact your doctor and the doctor says, well, why don't we try to split that in half? So the pharmacy still has a record of a full tablet of the medication you oh. take it, but now you're actually taking half of that. So that makes a difference too. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because after Jeff came on, I went home and I took my little business card and I wrote the meds. Mm -hmm. And I wrote no allergies. Because he said good. that was yeah, the other thing he wanted yes. to find out if I'm allergic to anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, diabetic. my darling bride is deathly allergic to penicillin. Mm -hmm. oh. So yeah. he said that's a good thing to know. Yes, I am also. Yes, yeah. Yes, that's the other thing is for you to have a copy of your wife's mm -hmm. medications and her allergies in the event that she can't give the she information with the no, And it kid. goes into children too, Al, yeah. because I've got a grandson from the time he was born. He's highly allergic to a lot of things. So that's important that his mom and he carries that information as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting because years ago we were told on your cell phone, because in my family it's, it's not implanted, but I've never seen the cell phones away from my children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, That's since true. they were, you know, right. 11 years old, they've had a cell phone implanted with them. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, so now the question comes out, where would be the best place? Because they all have contact lists. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Where would you recommend I write in well, that list? Well, I'll tell you a situation we had. When my ex passed away last July, all of its medication was on his phone, but his phone was passworded. So we could not get at it. So mm -hmm. that's important consideration. Mm -hmm. I hadn't even thought about that. Yeah. Right. right. Again, I put it on my phone, but... You might not be able to get into it. Yeah, my family would, because they all know. My, but I guess some people don't share their password at all. Right. 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 And as your family, when something happens, you're going to be right there to be able to tell them. So. It sounds like the best place is still the wallet, yes. the yeah. purse, whatever. Purse. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. And now you've given me a new category. So the medication's up to date with the date. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Jeff reminded me that put the date, you wrote it down. Yes. Because mm -hmm. if I see it that it's two years old, yeah. I'm going to question. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, especially you get old, rotund people like me. They're always changing medications. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. the list of medications and the dosage. Mm -hmm. Because again, he said a lot of people will say, I'm on lisinopril or I'm on this. And they don't know the dose. And they don't know the dose. Right. right. Or a torstatin thing. It's mm -hmm. one of those them there statins. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, That's it would be true. nice to know which one. Which and one? is it 10 mm -hmm. milligrams or 20? Mm -hmm. Correct. Correct. So the date you wrote, 
you updated the card, mm -hmm. all the medications, mm -hmm. any allergies. Mm -hmm. I hadn't thought about where I get them. Yeah. Yes. That's very important. Yes. Yeah. And that, that is listed on some of the, um, we took a lot of time to develop a new a medication card that we um, give to patients. Mm -hmm. um, and we took a lot of time to, uh, to make sure that it was big enough, that they could, um, they had the space that they needed. Mm -hmm. And we uh, made sure that we, and we made entries of what, where they needed to, what they needed to fill in, and pharmacy is one of them. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. prompts so that they um, knew uh, mm -hmm. what to put down. Yeah, the other thing diabetic is... diabetic or not. Right. That was another yeah, one. Yeah, they're diabetic. Yeah. Um, if they're a diabetic patient, it's important to know what their sugar levels are at. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a good quick reference. Um, mm -hmm. And supplements, too, mm -hmm. Anne, right? Yep. Vitamins. We asked for um, a whole wide range of items. Eye drops, ear drops, nasal sprays, allergy medicines, um, you know, this time of year, if it's, there's a lot of pollen, a lot of people take allergy medicine. So basically anything that you take, a patch, a lot of people wear patches, um, whether it be for nicotine or other purposes, for pain, um, things that are special creams, powders, lotions, or gels. I always wanted to have an alkaloid patch. <laughs> 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 Not that I need it, but it, it just alkaloids are my friend. I love <laughs> caffeine, so. We won't give it to you. <laughs> <but> <laughs> I was going to say. But Why can't I have a patch? You feel good. Just <laughs> yeah. give me a boost. <laughs> well, after the hard work we did putting this card together, Kathy can tell you how anybody can get this card. Mm -hmm. How big yes. is this card? It's a wallet size. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because that I always worry about is you get these great people who design these cards. Yeah. <laughs> and I look and I say, no, I'm not going to carry fit. that. Right. You know, it'll fit into a large purse. Mm -hmm. Right. But right. <laughs> my little wallet, no. No. Right. So this card. Mm-hmm fits in your wallet. So That's it good. folds in half. It's a nice sturdy cardstock material. Um, and it does. It has you list your name and your date of birth and the date you're filling it out on as well as all the medication information and the pharmacy and if you're diabetic or if you're on some sort of blood thinner as well. That's another important one that oh, God, falls yeah. in um, when we see people in the ER. We always ask for that too. So if you're on a baby aspirin, we count that. Or if you're on a yeah, you know, Waffen like or things like that. Every old man gets a baby aspirin. Oh, it's not just old. <laughs> no, they told me, when I, once I hit, I can't remember, it was like 50. They said, you're now old. Take a baby aspirin. <laughs> That's said, depressing. Why am I getting a baby aspirin? <laughs> you know, and they said 80 milligrams. I said, why don't you say that? I'm trying to figure out baby aspirin. You mean like right. a chewy? The small size. You know, is it yeah. a chewy one that yeah. you give to a kid? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I would imagine a lot of people are on a lot of different things, mm -hmm. but they don't think, uh, many people don't see themselves on a lot of medications. They don't consider the eye drops, ear drops, nasal sprays, allergy medicines, all the oh, vitamins. The told me to eat a dead fish, mm. you know, those fish drops. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You know, ground up dead fish. But that is <laughs> yeah. something. That's something. Yes, Any supplements, vitamins, multivitamins, you know, a lot of people take a lot of supplements, and those things count too. Yeah. I don't know. My daughter went out and got me vitamin for old men. 50 plus. <laughs> said, You're supposed to take Multi. one of these. It's like, okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> put, it in the, put it in with the others. Right. <laughs> yeah. So you've got your list of not just the primary, as we think of pharmaceutical, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but then you've got supplements. Mm -hmm. Right. So things like baby aspirin, I would have never thought. Important. You know, to sit there and say, okay, why are you taking baby aspirin? Well, I'm worried about my thromboxane levels. No. I'm worried because I'm old, and they said, take it. <laughs> so that's one good thing about being married 100 years. You learn to take directions well. <laughs> so when you're told, do it, you don't even do question. You just go ahead. <laughs> Allergies or any special medical conditions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That right. makes sense. Yeah. And how often you take these. Right. Some of them you take more than once a day, too. Right. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. So you could just like put 2x or 3x. Well, we yes. prefer to ask them, if there's a list that says 2x or 3x, what time do you take that medicine? Do you take it first thing in the morning? Do you take it at lunch? When do you take that medicine? That's interesting, because I almost automatically, when I see a dosing regime, mm -hmm. if, I, if I see once a day, mm -hmm. okay, that could be the morning or night. That could fool you. But if I see twice a day, I don't know why, but I'd automatically assume so, when I wake up yeah. and brush my teeth and when I go to sleep and brush my teeth. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's not true for all medications. That's not for all of right. them, though. So that's why we try to ask for a clarification. Really? Mm -hmm. So they'll have different timing. Yes. Mm -hmm. And what can go together. 
Mm -hmm. Sometimes something has to be in the morning and something has to be later to because them. they don't mix well together. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, that was the big push that some of the pharmacies made, that with the whole, I mean, Uncle Phil's so proud of his electronic medical records. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that, right. But, you know, all kidding aside, not, if you're going to two different physicians, like you say, if I'm going to a specialist, mm -hmm. he may or she may give me something that doesn't play real well with what my primary care gives me. Yes. Right. That's true. And we yeah. see people in the ER that have that situation. Yeah, that's a, that can be problematic. <coughs> mm -hmm. Excuse me. It's a, it's a good idea to take your list to any physician's appointment that you have um, so that if you are going to a specialist, you have your list so they can see it um, and they know what you're taking so they, you know, they won't order. So that would be a good place to have it on my cell phone so I don't forget my list. Yeah. Right. Because I'm for you. awake. Right. For emergencies, I still want the backup. I mean, if I want to do this right, mm -hmm. I'm going to do your card. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if I That's put it right. in my wallet, chances are your wallet, your purse. It's with you. And yes, so like my daughter and have purses, <laughs> many purses. <laughs> right. Yeah, I haven't figured out why she needs so many purses, but they had to go to match the hundreds of shoes. Of course. There you go. Of course. Uh, of course. <laughs> but you know, in general, if you carry a single primary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm then that would be the place to have the card. Mm -hmm. Yes. But I, I think I'm going to put it in my phone. As well. As a other. backup. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, if I get knocked out in a car accident, you're right. Unless you're part of my family and know my password. Keep a copy in the glove compartment. Oh, yeah, you cool. Could do that too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah but then i got to update it three times. It's true. But <laughs> still, compared to getting the wrong dose, mm -hmm. Or the wrong medication. Or the wrong medication, too. Or the wrong medication. Yeah, because a lot of them sound similar. So sometimes it's hard to distinguish. Yeah, those statin things. <coughs> right. That's right. right. Which one? Which one? Mm -hmm. yeah. What know. we do in our house periodically is we'll go to the pharmacist and have him review mm -hmm. and say, what time of the day, what do you suggest? Because they know to me better than the doctor knows. The doctor knows this pill might help you, but he doesn't know the side effects as well. Ask them both. Yeah. yeah. Can't hurt. Right. I mean, you, right. You're going normally once a year to get poked and prodded. Right. You know, while he's sticking a harpoon in you to draw blood, you can <laughs> ask her, okay, tell me about these things. Right. Mm -hmm. You would think that they would want to update your primary record anyway. Yes. Right. They and physicians' offices do have their electronic health records now that you can access online. but. Um, please understand that the hospital doesn't have access to all those. So if a patient comes in and says, it's all on the computer, um, we haven't, a technology hasn't caught up to being able to sp have all the computers speak to each other. So if, you know, you're in Tri-County, we have a very good... Um, I was going to say, I want to talk to Phil, because he keeps <laughs> telling me that anywhere in the Tri-County system... If you're in Tri-County, absolutely, we can pull that. But ah. if you're seeing someone in Boston, oh, 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 we okay. can't pull that. So as long as you stay in the center of the universe, no problem. <laughs> right. You're all set. I think Tri-County has, what, 95%? There's got to be one or two primary care physicians mm -hmm. that don't work for Phil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Probably, you know, maybe even three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But as long as you're in the Tri-County area, which is the Milford mm -hmm. Regional Medical, the Milford Hospital. Yes. We can get those. We can, can get, get that. Yes. But if yeah. you're seeing someone else, we aren't able to. But that's why we call the pharmacies and we call up, you know, the VA and we try to get a, the full list and then interview the patient and get clarification. So now this may be a silly question, but what was wrong that they had to do this PFAC? Somebody woke up and said, we want to employ people? <laughs> oh, no, I think they really want, believe it or not, they really want a community involvement and mm -hmm. it's been extremely helpful mm -hmm. because um, healthcare providers, we, we may not always, um, understand what the community wants, what the mm -hmm. patients want. Mm -hmm. um, you're surprised when you ask them sometimes, you know, what, what would you like out of this visit? Well, I just want to, I want to be kept up to date. I want, I want somebody to tell me what I'm waiting for if I'm waiting. Me, as a nurse, I would think they would want excellent medical care, but that isn't always at the top of the list. Uh, it may sound silly to you, but it's, um, mm -hmm. I, I think the community members have really taught us a lot about, um, and, and it's things like, for instance, if um, you know we had a fall committee, 
so there was a document that was going to be um, given to patients and families when they came into the hospital, some suggestions about what you can do to minimize the risk of fall while you're here. Um, and they, uh, hospital staff developed mm -hmm. the document, sent it to PFAC. The mm -hmm. PFAC members, the community members, read it and said, I don't know what this means. Um, you know, I, I would change this. I would make, um, they made some suggestions and they were put on the form and that's, and that's the, what went into mm -hmm. practice. So it's been, it's actually been very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. um, we, mm -hmm. we thoroughly enjoy having their mm -hmm. feedback and, um, and they're now, PFAC members are, um, are on many hospital committees um, and they mm -hmm. are providing their, um, their feedback on those committees. It's, it's, been, it's been excellent. So, um, you know. I mean, some of the original <coughs> stuff was so obvious to people who are not part of a hospital. I mean, I joke with Frank and Ed about the rules. If you remember the Little Milford Hospital, mm -hmm. they used to hand two cards because you could only have two visitors. Oh. So yes. you went to the front door, mm -hmm. and if your two cards were out, nobody could come in until they returned them. <coughs> oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You had to carry your card out. Of course, they, the people well-intentioned, the mm -hmm. administrators, mm -hmm. had no idea that they were sitting in the heights, you know, surrounded by <laughs> Portuguese grandmothers. <laughs> so inevitably, a door would get left open, mm -hmm. and the grandmothers would all file in. And I remember one time, I'm sitting up, because I took my mom up, and there's like eight or nine Portuguese grandmothers, and they're chipper chatter poor floor nurse comes in to say, I'm sorry, only two people are allowed here. They all turned around, almost, it was like choreographed, no speaky inky. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at them, and one of the grandmothers looked and said, if you rat us out, you're dead. <laughs> you know, these people have been here 30 years. Yeah. They most certainly they know, know how English. to speak English. Yeah. <laughs> right. But all of a sudden, no. You know, but there was a cultural thing where if you want the patient to feel better, mm -hmm. the girlfriends have to, you know, the 80-year-old girlfriends all have to be there together. You know, and yeah. how do you explain that to somebody, the value? Mm -hmm. Yes, of their you know, family yeah. being there. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's hard if you don't have the community involved, especially when it comes down to, there was no way you're telling my mother that she wasn't going to be there with her friend. And she'd just sit there for hours at a time, and they would just all sit. It can go opposite, too, Well, There are some patients that absolutely do not want visitors. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, that's totally countercultural to everything that yeah. I grew up with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you look at a Portuguese wedding, you know, I mean, when my daughter got married, they made me limited to 350. <laughs> oh my goodness! Well, my goodness, the ones at the Portuguese club are 600 plus. <laughs> you know, yeah. when people talk about little pretty weddings, it's like you mean, yeah, like ours, 350. That was a little <laughs> wedding. So I would think it's critical to have people from the community, absolutely, yeah, letting you know. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, we appreciate their feedback and their help. It's, it's, it's really been very... But even um, things like the cards. Stage. Yeah. I mean, this is Milford. Do you have them in Portuguese? We have them online um, in Portuguese, Spanish, <coughs> and English. So they could go to the website, mm -hmm. um, the homepage website, and download um, a copy, or they can, they can populate it and save it to their um, desktop and well, change and it. Again, and that's where I challenge the kids. You know, my mother mm -hmm. has never touched a computer. Mm -hmm. Right. My sainted mother has never driven a car. Yeah. It's just a fact of life. Mm -hmm. So if I want her meds listed, I best be doing it. You would mm -hmm. do it, right? Yes. You know, and that seems like a really small price to pay for everything they have done for you. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. Right. You have to work together, I think. So you interrogate people when they walk in the door <laughs> and get all this information. Yes. You get it into the electronic medical record. So they, everybody can share? Well, that's the final step. What we do is we gather the information from the patient. We gather the information from the pharmacies. We do some collaboration and find out what's accurate, how the patient's taking it, when the patient's taking it, and then we put it into our system, into the computer system at the hospital, um, in the admissions 
um, hospital system. From there, when the patient is discharged, they get a brand new list of all the medications that have been verified, but also instructions on stop this medication, continue this medication, or this is a new medication, depending on what they were being treated for in the hospital. So all that paperwork, you know, you're being given this, go to your pharmacy, do this twice a day for X, that's all coming out of the system? Yes. Yes. Yes, and that gets sent to the primary care office too, or the nursing home, or who, however their doctor will find out the same information, the discharge instructions. So now everything. if they're part of Tri-County, mm -hmm. obviously they're in the system. Yes. Mm -hmm. When I show up, mm -hmm. they bring me up and all the information's there. Yes. Correct. What happens if I go to one of the three people that don't work for Tri-County? How do they get this information? You'd have to carry that paperwork with you so that those people can populate their systems. So you're counting on the patient then to remember mm -hmm. in three months to carry the documents to their physician. Oh, yeah. you mean the discharge documents? No, just, you know, all the, oh. I, I, we yeah. changed the medication. We did if this. It's the we pri if the primary care is listed, which that usually is, it does get sent to them. Mm -hmm. But if it's to a specialist or something No, but even like the primary that. care, I'm just trying to think, if I'm part of the EMR program, Mm -hmm. So I'm part of Tri-County. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't have to send anything. I, I pull up Andra and everything comes with her. Mm -hmm. But if I'm one of the physicians, you know, I'm being facetious saying three, but you know, the, the 5% that aren't part of Tri-County, how do they get this information? Do you mail it or do they have to ask it's, for it's it? It's electronically it's forwarded, sent right. over. Yeah. So they're in, the, they're in a system. Right. We can get right. that information to them. Yeah, we can oh, get yeah, it. Of billing. We can get the information to them, but it, they have to pull well, that's it and okay. populate it. Right. If I've sent it to you, yeah. at least I know it got to the physician. Mm -hmm. Right. Now it's their responsibility to take care of the administrative side. Right. Correct. Yeah. Now you said this has been very successful. Yes. Okay, I'll put you on the spot. Besides giving you a job. <laughs> What's me? I mean, this is very successful. Why? Because I'm employed. No. This is a good thing. This, this is, is a volunteer, volunteer effort. This is, yeah. this is a volunteer effort. The group. PFAC members PFAC are all volunteers. Is all. PFAC is free? Yes. <laughs> no wonder Ed and Phil love you guys. <laughs> I had no yes. idea. Yes, yeah. we all volunteer. We all volunteer our time. Yes. Yeah. How wonderful. Yeah. Because yeah. we love what we do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what metrics? When you say it's been very successful. Um, well, this program we have um, we have gone out to um, senior centers in the community. Um, we the auxiliary purchased some um, pill boxes, um, which was awesome. They donated money so that we could uh, purchase pill boxes, and we uh, made the cards and we went out to a variety of um, senior centers and um, presented a little um, information education again in the pill boxes and the cards. It was um, very well received. Um, mm -hmm. And we still, we're still going on. We've, we're, uh, yeah. tr we're continuing to try to get education out. Right. Um, we visited probably, we've had probably 125 mm -hmm. individuals um, that we've given cards and boxes to in the community. We visited six different um, senior centers at this point, and we have a couple more lined up that yeah. we're going to continue to work with. So like you call Sue Trotter, I can't say, I keep, Sue Clark. Mm -hmm. You'd think after a decade she'd get the name right. <laughs> um, you call Sue Clark up. Yeah. She's running the senior center. Mm -hmm. She's got a love for the seniors that is unmatched. Mm -hmm. And you say, we want to help out. Mm -hmm. I'm sure she would open the doors. Mm -hmm. What do you do when you go there? We go and we present. We have a little presentation we do talking about the importance of medication and the safety issues involved in medications, my role in the ER, but also we give them the medication cards, the wallet cards that they um, have, and we also give them the pill boxes, the seven week or seven day, one week pill boxes. Seven weeks. I know that would be really <laughs> tremendous. That would be a big box. <laughs> big box. <laughs> um, but. Um, Andrew was very wonderful with the auxiliary working with us to get those pill boxes. They're a good large size, 
so it fits those big calcium tablets or you know some of those tablets. Oh, those vitamins. big red things that yeah. grandma yeah. takes. Some yeah. of those big pills are too big to fit in a standard pill box. So these are a large size pill oh. box. We must have a large box because she's got these things. I looked at my darling Bryce with these horse tablets. They, sometimes yeah, they look that big. way. They yeah. Huge. Okay. They are yes. huge. Yeah. Yeah. I think I got a little mother. What's <laughs> with this big? Right. So. We distributed those, and some people, we had very, very good um, feedback from the individuals we were giving them to because some of them asked, well, I take medicine in the morning and at night. Can I get two boxes? And that's a good way to keep track of what you're taking as well. Or, or they say, you know, um, this is really big. You know, do you have something smaller? And unfortunately, we don't have something smaller. But they thought it was very helpful that they could take it on vacation. You know, they yeah. fill the box, and then they're going on a cruise, and they'd be all set for the week. Well, I know so. just to keep things straight for mom. We've got the the double sided job. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. So yep. once a week we populate it. Yeah. Yeah, that's and, great. And you know, it's it's perfect. It's not just facilitating, but from a compliance standpoint. Mm -hmm. uh, when Sharon, when my darling bride goes downstairs, she looks. Okay, she's been given her medicine. Right. You know, because now with the dementia at ninety three, she'll never remember. Right. 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 And we have a lot of patients that are in that boat, so it's nice to have that box so you'll remember, even I remember, oh yeah, I did take my multivitamin this morning, the box is empty. So it's not just for someone that's older, well, it's yeah, for everyone. It does help because like on Saturday mornings, my darling bride is very religious. Mm -hmm. She's gone to the Temple of the Divine Nail <laughs> since 1989. <laughs> Same appointment <laughs> with two girlfriends. I mean, I sit there and say, how does it feel now to be one of the people that they want to die? Because all these younger women, to get that 9 o'clock Saturday spot, yeah. you've got to either move or pass on. <laughs> But if she goes down on a Saturday morning, and I'm in my office, when by the time I go down there, she's already gone off to you know worship at the Temple of the Divine <laughs> Nail, and I go look at the box and go, ah, she gave mom her medicine. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, right. that's great. Yeah, yeah, keeps everyone on the same page. So yeah. that really makes it easy. Yeah. Yes. You know, and yeah. it's got two sides, so I, yeah. morning and night. Right. More importantly, I don't have to open up all those stupid bottles multiple times. Mm -hmm. I just right. do it once, once a week. week. Yeah, Set it up for great. the whole week. Yeah. So the goal of this committee that they've been doing has been going out and saying, Milford Hospital covers a lot of different towns. So they're trying to approach every senior center in every one of the towns to get the word out. Mm -hmm. right. Oh, that makes sense, because you, know, you say six senior centers, so we only have one. <laughs> <laughs> right, the big one. Right. <laughs> yeah, we have a nice one. I mean, they, but you know, you yeah, think about it. Good. These are the people who built Milford, mm -hmm. right? You know, that's I mean, right. We're yeah, not doing much right. but paying back. Mm -hmm. You know what they put into it, because without them, we wouldn't be here, mm -hmm. right? So you know, when people say it's a little over the top, it's like not enough. Yeah. You know, you got to watch every penny. Right. You know, at the end of the day, I'm part of the finance committee, so I got to growl and snarl. But when Sue comes and says she really needs something, mm -hmm. it gets done. Yeah. You know, so programs like this. Now, when you go there and you write all the stuff down, does it get brought back to the hospital or entered in or no? When we go right. Oh, you go to a senior center. Mm -hmm. we so I like the idea you're giving me a lecture, mm -hmm. so you're educating me, mm -hmm. which is nice because if I got to sit there all day, instead of playing Mahjong or, mm -hmm. you know, uh, bingo, I can learn. Mm -hmm. But then you get my little cards. And I guess the idea is they'll show the card when they go to the when hospital. When they go to the doctor or, or the, the doctor. hospital or to their family. So the mm -hmm. family knows too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean that would be, you know, from a grandparent standpoint. You know, as you say, you know, my daughter was, she inherited the default gene, my wife. We have the Portuguese purebred <laughs> side, <laughs> and then we have the American side, Heinz 57. There were many flavors <laughs> thrown into her. One of those had an allergy to bumblebees. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we lived with making sure that my daughter, who inherited that defective gene, <laughs> always had that silly pen Epi with pen. her. Epi the EpiPen. Yeah. Epi yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so from that end, you sit there and say, okay, parents, even when you have daughters 29 years old, like mm -hmm. I do in 25, make sure they filled in the card. Mm -hmm. That's right. right. That's right. Yes, everyone. It's you a know, family you, affair. That's yeah, and now you get, you know, now I'm dealing with grandson. Right. So pretty soon we're going to make sure when he gets a wallet that it's in there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. What are the biggest safety issues that you address? 
in the ER? With adherence. medication safety. Medication yeah. safety. Yeah. I mean, when you think of medication mm -hmm. safety, I think, am I getting the right medicine at the right time mm -hmm. at the right dose? But now right medicine, if I'm getting something that conflicts, you know, something that double drops my blood pressure. That right. may not be the greatest thing in the world. That's right. true. And that's what we that's what we catch on our end when you come to the ER. We hope it's not that case, but <laughs> that's that's what we catch. We catch things that are duplicate therapies or things that shouldn't go together. Things that How do you know? Well, we don't know. I technically <laughs> am not a clinician. Right. But I enter everything. Um, and I let the doctor know when I'm complete and he can look at it, but also the pharmacists upstairs in the hospital look at it too, but there's software on top of that that runs cross-checks on all medications to say, you know, these two interact or you shouldn't have these together or, um, you know, these should be in the morning and these should be in the evening. But you're not yelling up to, hey, Mr. Bonvino, does, <laughs> do these, does the yellow go with the green? Well, no. I mean, how do, is there like a relational database, a software package? There are. It comes with the pharmacy system. That's already built in. But also I found that just the pharmacists themselves and the doctors, they already know. They know those medications and say, no, those shouldn't be together even before they get the flag. Um, oh, okay. yeah. Right after I, you know, plug it in, all those flags will populate and, you know, they'll take a peek at each patient and everything. But they already know. And I know that the ER doctors are vigilant about the medications too. And they'll say, you know, and I'll let them know, you know, these things are a little bit different. And they'll, they'll research. They'll plug well, I'm in. I'm the most concerned about your world. Mm -hmm. Because when I'm going to my primary care or I'm going to a specialist, he's got time. She has the time to think, to research. I show up at your door and you may have minutes to make a decision. So, right. okay, if I'm already on a blood thinner, vasodilators may not be the best thing you want to throw at me. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. You have to have very, you know, an accurate list as quickly as possible. Yeah. I mean, I've seen a lot of the stuff, um, the infusion pumps. Mm hmm Yeah. The Those FDA safety. started to really push hard mm -hmm. years ago because, you know, underdosing or overdosing seemed to be the number one problem. Yes. Mm -hmm. Using yes. infusion pumps. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, right. so all of a sudden mm -hmm. the, the the libraries, it's amazing. It's not stupid old para it's not a stupid old syringe pump or mm -hmm. you right. know, um peristaltic right. pump anymore. Right. They they've made a big difference in patient safety, no question about it. Uh, I was around in the mm -hmm. times when we didn't have there was no such thing as an infusion pump and mm -hmm. It was very, very easy for an IV to run away, you know, very easy. Mm -hmm. um, and now it's it's pretty much non-existent, you know, is um, the, the pumps all have programs in about every single drug and how quickly they should run and mm -hmm. um, And if you try and infuse too quickly, yeah, well, there's it just alarm, you get there's the, the red light the, saying, uh-uh. Yeah, that's right. right. I'm sorry, that's way too much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we, we really, we need that technology because there are just so many medications and so many interactions and people are alive longer, they're on more medications than ever. It's, mm -hmm. it's um, we have to put every safety well, mechanism I mean, I in place. a mm -hmm. move in the pediatric side mm -hmm. where I start seeing coded syringes mm -hmm. being put into a syringe pump. Right. And that's got to come out of an effort similar to what yes. you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yes. To Absolutely. say, okay, yeah. with a little peed, by the time I figure out that, oops, yeah. right. it could be not the best result. Right. right. That's right. So I started seeing some of the um, infusion pumps with barcode readers and, mm -hmm. you know, oh, yeah. personalized yes. labels being printed so that... Yeah. Yes. Everything matches. Yes. Everything, Every, has you to match. say, Everything has to match. Is yes. this Sally S Mitchell? Yep. Right. Yes. Patient. Is it, is it, is it? Yes. Yes. You're scanning their ID band. You're scanning exactly. the drug. You're seeing on your screen. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is the correct... Which I found amazing. Yeah. You know, I mean, back when they gave you the little band. Mm -hmm. Right. I remember when my daughter, my first daughter was born, mm -hmm. it was uh, down in Virginia, and they had had people borrowing children. Mm -hmm. They actually had somebody dress up as a nurse. She'd go in, and let's face it, the mothers are kind of out of it on day one. Right. And say, you know, Miss Ann, it's time to put the baby in the nursery. Baby went in gym bag, out the door. Mm. You know, so awful. So after I read about two of those, mm -hmm. 
Yes, we use the old Portuguese barcode. I slept on the floor. <laughs> Nurses hated me. Mm. I looked. I said, "You're going to have to arrest me, but I'm going to sit in front of this door. So anybody that comes in or out <laughs> is, I'm going to see him. Yeah, yeah. So you know, you look up and say, "Not my baby." Okay, <laughs> <laughs> not my baby. Yeah. But you know, all kidding aside, you look and say, from a safety point of view, yeah. not just physically mm -hmm. stealing a baby. But the idea that, I mean, let's, you can say Mr. Bonvino and crew are perfect, mm -hmm. and they'll never make a mistake, <laughs> but last time I looked, they were human. They're people, right. right. So, you know, being able to scan, scan yeah. the bracelet, yeah. scan the syringe, mm -hmm. right, and, do, you know, the double check. Yes. God, that's... It's, got, it's helping. It's definitely yeah. helping. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and I can't yeah. imagine any physician that wouldn't welcome a secondary check because mm -hmm. what do they get to lose yeah oh I, I think they really well, especially when they have the nurses do it that's even better for them <laughs> 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 let me say I can tell a physician this will be better for your patient safer and they don't have to do anything they just tell the nurse make it so yeah. how do you go wrong on that one well, there you go <laughs> the physicians really really appreciate the uh, medication uh, technologists they get an accurate mm -hmm. list it's it's um it's been wonderful they have you, we've gotten mm -hmm. a lot of positive feedback yeah, from them we have they they see the quality they see the quality yeah. yeah it makes a difference and that trickles down onto the primary physician too they they get the the message that that's right i did tell the patient to take half a tablet i need to update their yeah. their right. prescription cuz the half tablet time. thing i can see because right. when they put my mother on half first of all okay manly me Take big knife. Does big knife I learned doesn't cut doesn't tablet. Cut. <laughs> crushes tablet. That's right. Now it's difficult to before my wife sees what I did, can I push it back together? <laughs> and I find out I'm not strong enough to compress the tablet back to a recognized form. So I went down to the local pharmacy yeah. and I said, Okay, I have buoy knife, I have little tablet. They don't seem compatible. <laughs> Man, it's a machine. Yep. Yeah, right. pill cutters. Yeah, yeah, pill cutters. <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. How did I know? There's no one. Yeah. But now, if you really looked at my mom's pharmaceutical records, mm -hmm. her pharmacy records, they'd never say half a tablet. They wouldn't. The doctor has to update that. You know, we knew she was taking half a tablet because mm -hmm. I cut them in half all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was actually, from a selfish point of view, very happy when she went to a whole tablet. <laughs> <laughs> Made, it easier. Made it much easier. <laughs> yeah. Every time I'd miss one, it's like, must be <laughs> That would be important to put on the card. Yeah. Right. Yeah, oh, it's true. And you have yeah. to also be aware that um, medications come, as you said, in a lot of different um, dosages. Um, and sometimes when physicians are testing out, they'll try, you know, they'll start with a five and then they'll do one and a half. So it's seven and a half milligrams oh, on the tablet, yeah. and then they'll jump to the 10, because, and the 10 works well. Well, then the, page, the doctor can order instead of the five milligram tablet that you've had for, you know, however long, they move to the 10. But the patient needs to also be aware that they're not taking two tablets anymore. They're just taking oh, one. Oh, they may go 20 right. by, yes, yes, by accident. and that happens yeah. too. Yeah. Well, we've done, mm -hmm. uh, my darling bride and I are both on the same statin. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Uh, she's a lot more healthy than I am. Mm -hmm. So she's at half the dose I am. <laughs> Yeah. Color coded it. <laughs> took a red sharpie mm -hmm. and just oh, colored the top of colored the top. top of her bottle. And I That's said, make sure idea. you do red. Stay away from mine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we joked about it, but seriously, it it you don't want difference. me underdosing myself. Right, right. right. Or, 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 or overdosing. overdosing. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So you know, from that end, little things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and like I say, sometimes it's the warm blanket. Mm -hmm. You know, it's color coding the top to make sure that you don't screw up. Mm -hmm. um, I was telling them today, I, John is on Coumadin, and I screwed up. I accidentally put his Coumadin in his pillbox, but it's different days, different dosages. But then I gave it Holy to him at night, and then at night I gave it to him again. So he, I was double dosing him for about five days before I realized what was going I'm on. I'm going to put something in my will that if my darling bride double doses me <laughs> on anything, <laughs> anything I have left goes to my daughter. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you put eight pills in his little box? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, that was a mistake. Eh? That is really, I mean, I can't it's imagine tough. from a compliance standpoint. Mm -hmm. Coumadin's a tricky one. 
because it does change every week or two, depending on the oh, blood does. results. Yes. yes. Yes, it does. It depends if you're eating a lot of greens. That makes a difference. Right. Um, so that's why you're tested every couple of weeks. Wow. Yeah. So we'll go in, he'll have a level of 1.9, 2.7, and then it was 5 because he was getting too much. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. all over the place. Yeah. See, there's always yeah. things like warfarin, and you sit there that's and say, it. just doesn't sound right mm -hmm. that you're going to give somebody warfarin. Right. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what we right. gave rats? <laughs> <laughs> to have them bleed out? Yes, they bled to death. <laughs> so, you know, you sit there and say, now, wait a minute, let me understand this. If my darling bride tells me I should take warfarin. <laughs> you know, I guess after a hundred years of marriage, I can trust her. <laughs> yeah. Everybody kept yeah. telling me it's the first hundred years that'll be tough. <laughs> now we're on the downslide. There you go. As long as you keep seeing Darling Bride, you've got yeah. <laughs> You're all set. <laughs> we always had the argument from the beginning. I said, you know, I wouldn't want to live with me, so if you want to leave, I understand. You take my daughters, there will be no custody <laughs> issue. You will disappear. <laughs> <laughs> and then again, once the daughters turn teenagers, that was the threat. <laughs> I will leave my daughters with you. <laughs> and then I was sure she would never leave. So, yeah. you know, you look at the medicine. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, you know, on the serious side that we're facing is this whole opiate. Mm -hmm. oh. You know, because when we grew up, let's face it, um, in the 60s, 70s, the heroin user. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was that scrunchy, yucky person that hid, yeah. you know, in the dark alleys. Right. And now, all of a sudden, you're seeing a large percentage created by the parents without even knowing, you know, that they leave some of these old medication bottles. Yeah. You know, and when the kids all of a sudden hurt themselves and they become hooked on this stuff, mm -hmm. they that, just exacerbate yeah. it by going to the medicine cabinet. Mm -hmm. Right. So are we educating people to say, hey, by the way, there's a guy named Tom O'Loughlin. He's got a big box mm -hmm. yeah. at the police station, mm -hmm. you know, because the yeah. old days of pump yeah. it down the toilet. Right. right. Oh, no, no we can't do that anymore. That's not good. Well, it goes right into the, I mean, Why? you're giving your neighbor right. Right. your medication. Right. right into the aquifer, you're giving. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we do talk about that, too, um, when we go visit the senior centers, that the, there are fire stations or police stations that have a drop box, and they, no questions asked, they'll just take no, your Well, Thomas said, yeah. you yeah, want to bring, bring in the heroin, bring you want to bring anything. the worst of the worst. Yeah, yeah. Right. they'll take it. Bring in a bag. Throw it in the box. I mean, he's it. being facetious, right. but I mean, the idea is you don't have to worry. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, that, okay, I don't really want people to know what medication I'm on. Well, yeah. you walk in a police station, mm -hmm. throw yeah. the bottle in, it's the front, right through the front door. Yeah. And usually no one's there. You can just put it in, no one sees you anyway. Yeah, but I think the, the key is even if there's a police officer there, yeah, they're not going to say anything. They don't they're not going to worry about it. They right. want they're blind to facilitate people coming in. Absolutely. Right, of course. You know, for safety. Absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. So, okay, if, you, if you're of the ilk that you want to help, then why would, you know, the first time they yell at you, nobody's going to go back in there. Mm -hmm. right. right. You know, if they ever jumped yeah. and said, Miss Ann, you have a bad thing, I'm mm -hmm. going to arrest you. Right. Well, that yeah. word would get out so quick. Right. 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 Yeah. Be counter. So, you know, I would think educating people on, okay, as these mail order houses, let's face it, they make a margin on how many pills they push. Right. It's not the tower, but how many they deliver. So they put you on automatic. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, we noticed that once on, I had three bottles of this Enalapro thing, and it's like, I had to call them and say, stop sending them. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and it, General Motors, God bless them, took care of my mother, so she never paid anything in the old days. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't even like they were charging you, mm -hmm. and you would notice because you had to put the money out. It just showed up. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And all of a sudden, I'm looking at it saying, this stuff's going to expire mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. before she can take it. Right. Right. Yeah. Now I got dead pills. Ninety more. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. It's true. You know, so, you know, step one was to call them. Right. Mm -hmm. Express scripts and say, no more. no more. Don't be so expressy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then taking it down, mm -hmm. and I mean, these were legitimate, prescribed, mm -hmm. right. you know, non-addictive. It wasn't anything like, I got to go down there at night when nobody can see me. <laughs> yeah. I just walk in, throw it away, and it's right. gone. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's great. You know, and if you are worried about security, throwing even an empty bottle in your trash, mm -hmm. I mean, that's going to end up in a landfill or somewhere. Mm -hmm. And who knows that somebody doesn't come, oh, Ann's on this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. your information's on yeah, there. Right, I've been tearing the name off or scratching yeah. it out. All oh, yeah, I'm going to sit there and peel it off. <laughs> It seems like it's though. easier to Put just go box. down to the police department and <laughs> throw it in. I never and thought not deal of it with an empty bottle. I never thought of doing it that way. Yeah. <laughs> well, the only the reason option. I bring it up is yeah. some people, you know, have asked saying, "Well, the security." That makes no, sense. No, there's no officer yeah. looking through the bucket mm -hmm. to find out what Andrew's taking. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, it defeats the purpose. The whole purpose of that program is that in Tom we trust. Right. Mm -hmm. People feel safe. You feel yes. safe. Yeah. yeah. You know, he has given us his word that none of his staff are going to use that right. against you. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, it's like everything else here in Milford, you know. The minute you break your word, if Tom ever broke his word. Yeah, it would get out. Right. You know, so many times he comes in front of the FinCom and when he tells us stuff, we take it for granted. He's yeah. never lied to us yet. He's always a straight shooter. Yeah. So when he tells us, I absolutely need this, mm -hmm. you know, when you say, Nobody will do this. You know, so I would think the, uh, another thing to tell people is, okay, kids, go through parents' medicine cabinets. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can, we can put that into our little We program. don't want your parents taking, I mean, let's face it, when we were making the antibodies and, you know, the active pharmaceutical ingredient, when we did our shelf studies, if we said the expiration was nine months, it was really 15 or 17. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I you don't want it. anybody taking a chance. Mm -hmm. Right. Because, you know, when we say it's a year expiration, used before, mm -hmm. that's under ideal conditions. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's correct. You know, how many that times stored correctly and people the right have thrown it in their purse, take it down the Cape, mm -hmm. and it sits in the car at 130 degrees? Right. right. Well, all of a sudden, the lifetime, the shrunk. stability data right. shrunk. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, when you think about how we did accelerated stability, you would raise the temperature 10 degrees. Mm -hmm. And that doubled so what, what should happen. So instead of doing a year, if I went up 30 degrees, I could do my stability in four months. I still had to wait a year, mm -hmm. but I could have mm -hmm. some initial data. Mm -hmm. Well, putting it in a car in the summer, that goes up 110, 120 degrees. Oh, right. At least. Mm -hmm. You know, so telling people, be careful. Right. Because the stability or the expiration, I think most people would think of the expiration. Mm -hmm. Changes. Changes. Could change dramatically. Mm -hmm. You know, and like mom goes to grandma daycare. People at Blair House are fantastic. Aren't they great? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maureen and crew really take great care of her. But they have their rules. Mm -hmm. I just found out the bottle, we have to get a new bottle. Because we just kept tipping. Oh. And now it says expires by. Mm -hmm. I said, can't I just tip? She goes, no. Yeah. <laughs> get a new label on it. Yeah. <laughs> so we have to get new label. Mm -hmm. Well, the only way to get new label is new bottle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Safe, though. It's but again, you can't, you can't complain. Right. You know, when you see a group like the Blair House who, they just go out of their way to take care of. Yeah. And I'm trusting do. them with my mother. Mm -hmm. Right. So when they tell me they have to do that. Yeah, you work with them. What other things can we tell people? Well, we, we always ask patients for a med list. We always ask patients where they fill. We always ask patients um, who we should contact because sometimes they're not in their right, you know, Ooh, usual Ooh, on the lines. card. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is. Who should, they, who should we call? You know, and who takes care phone. of your meds? I hadn't even thought about that because, again, realistically, I'm counting on the fact that you can figure out Right. I mean, Andrew's always at the hospital, so if I got in trouble, <laughs> she would know who to call. But if there is a person that Andrew doesn't know, yeah. mm -hmm. somewhere in Milford, Dick, we don't know, know any. <laughs> somewhere in the center of the universe, yeah. there may be somebody who Andrew doesn't know. You know, and you joke and you yeah. say, okay, there's 28,000 of us that know Milford's the center of the universe. Mm -hmm. yeah. Six billion have to be educated. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. They're still learning. We're still, they're still learning. Okay, a little longer. But that would be a good thing to have on the card. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, you're talking about your traveling to work. Look at the distance you go. If you're yes. out on the road and something happened, they wouldn't yeah. know. Yeah, I thought about that because mm. I drive to Woburn. 
sometimes I think I need a passport. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> People know, can get that card mailed to them for free yeah. if they call the volunteer office at the hospital mm -hmm. and leave a message that they'd like a medication card. They can. Uh, oh, they'll so I just call the, the mail. Milford Hospital, or Ask Milford Regional Medical Center. That's yes. correct. Um, <laughs> Ask for the volunteer office. Ask for the volunteer office or and say, I want, if I forgot all this, right. I mm -hmm. am old. <laughs> so I can remember calling the med center, calling the mm -hmm. hospital. Yeah. Right. And I get that nice receptionist. Right. And I say, I want a med card. She'll probably know where to send me. Yes, yes. the volunteer office. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's yeah. really good. And then you'll mail it. We'll yes. mail it and it doesn't you. cost me anything. That's no. right. Right. No. That's even better. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. And yeah. you get this money from things like Tastes of the Town, yeah. or Taste yeah. of the Town. Taste of the Town, <laughs> yes, um, that's coming up. Not necessarily for that. Other money that we've raised throughout the year, this yeah. year for Taste of Town, it's all going mm -hmm. for palliative care, which is another thing another. the PFAC is, yes. team right. has been working on as mm -hmm. well. But we raise money throughout the year for things that come up, such as the medication yeah. boxes. Well, you yeah. know, and again, this, I, I keep joking about the warm blanket, but this card in my wallet, you know, all kidding aside, if it saves Jeff and his staff two minutes, mm -hmm. right? How do you know, you know, that that two minutes mm -hmm. didn't it, make all the difference in important. the world? Yeah, it's important. Forget how I feel. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. You know, I mean, you know, when he started talking about stroke prevention, mm -hmm. and you know, yeah, do I have a stroke? Well, I'm a manly man, I can see through it. He goes, yeah, really, two million brain cells. A minute? Mm -hmm. How many you want to give up? I said, oh, I don't have that many. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let, let me not kid around. Right, right. So, you know, he taught us how to do things. You know, like do a stroke buddy. Mm -hmm. So that if I even think I'm having a stroke, I call, hi, Miss Ann, how are you? Right. You know why I'm calling. I know why I'm calling. I'm too old and my ego isn't such. I want to say, do I sound okay? Mm. You know, so Jeff taught us. He said, look. You know why they're calling. Just say, mm -hmm. you sound really good. Right. Oh, yeah. okay. Perfect. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? I can That's really hear you. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, you know, little things like that can right. make all the difference in mm -hmm. yeah. survival or quality yeah. of life. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yes, you're right. So yeah. uh, let's take 30 seconds and talk about the auxiliary. This is one of the programs. Mm -hmm. yeah. One of the programs. Right. One of the things we did this year, too, which was big for pediatrics, we bought a big computer toy. And I say toy, but it's a big computer mm -hmm. that the kids, that when they're in there and they want something to do, they can play games, and it's mm -hmm. been so popular. Um, mm -hmm. They had one little boy that had been there almost four days and had no visitors. This just broke my heart. Oh. But his joy in life was being able to use this computer. Well, I would think so just, just to make his... Attention for the parents. Right. right. That if the kids are running around and you're nervous, and right. mm -hmm. just having them yeah. cool. Yeah. And right. always come eat a taste of the towns. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. Yes. We're going to be in here in a couple of weeks to talk about that, oh. but it's September 15th yeah. at the Portuguese Cup. Oh. It's Wonderful. always in September. Yep. And right. 6.30 for my wife, <laughs> 6 o'clock for everybody else. That way at 6 right. o'clock I get there and go eat all the stuff I'm not supposed to. Right. So by the time she shows, as if she doesn't know, no. by the time she shows up at 6.30, I can pretend I'm You're eating a good salad. Yeah. Right. Right. As always, it's amazing what services are available here in Milford. You know, we kid around about being at the center of the universe, but we get an A for medical care. My hats are off. My hat's off to the people like you're seeing tonight who don't settle, who always want that A+. Plus. So to our six loyal viewers, good night, may God bless, and may tomorrow be a healthier day than today. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Not too long since I've been home